In this video, I'll be giving you a review of the South Ord Jackknife Lockpick sets, as well as a comparison to the cheap Asian knockoffs, which come under various names, but they're all the same thing, essentially, in terms of what they are and the quality. Uh, this one is called uh, Lock Free. There's others called H and H, which has more of a a shiny finish like uh, the Southward. They all run around the same price range, anywhere between eight dollars and twelve dollars. But the quality is pretty poor, and you really get what you pay for with those cheaper uh, picks. Uh, now, uh, let me show you. Uh, what picks you have. Here's an older uh, Southward Jackknife. This was my first lock pick set I got years ago. And um, it has a much, this is a much lighter weight, which I like over this newer model, which is uh, a lot heavier. And this is also a lot heavier. Although recently um, Southward came out with a newer one. Uh, that has a dark finish. It's supposed to be a bit lighter, and the the lock nut is supposed to um, be a bit better still. So, um, also, I don't like the lock assortment that you get, the pick assortment you get on this versus this, or even the generic. But anyway, let's get into um, the picks. You pull out the tensioning bars, the tensioning bars here on these. It's all the same thing. The general shape, size, how you pull them out. Here's your tensioner. You loosen the lock nut. You pull your pick set out. This comes with five picks. So what you have here appears to be either a long or a medium hook. Here's an S rake, which is what I used to pick my master lock in a video a long time ago. This is I think a half diamond they call this. Uh, here you have a ball which is good for wafer locks and this is a broken key extractor. What we have in this newer model much more useful set of picks. Also the finish on the picks are a little bit higher end are more reflective a little smoother it's a nice uh, snug there's no looseness or jiggle very high quality material very strong and what you have here is the, about the same size hook as in the first one but you also have um, a shorter hook which helps for you know different scenarios so you have your hook as before this is either a medium or a long here's your S rake very similar to the first one here's uh, I believe it's called the half diamond the same as the previous one uh, this is like a half a ball so you could use this for single pin, pin picking or maybe even wafers as well but and also a really nice addition is the city rake, which is over here. You use a rocking technique to open locks using this pick. And here's your short hook, which really helps with uh, smaller keyways, etc. So this is a really nice pick set and a really nice upgrade in pick assortment versus that previous model. And now you have your what is basically a clone of the Southward set has similar pick offerings with just some minor differences you pull your tension bar out the same way it's not quite as heavy as the Southward pick set As you see, these are very loose fitting, very poor quality materials, the, the metal that the picks are made of, 
are certainly not nearly as durable and um, show a little bit more signs of uh, fatigue from from use and they're also um, a lot harder to close up when you close it but anyway let's show you the pick assortment it's not in the same order but here you have your city rake very nice to have one of those your s rake for you know, quick uh, zipping techniques to open locks. This would be equivalent to um, that that short hook, although I forget the name of that style specifically. Here again, you have like a medium or long hook. I guess it's more medium. Here's your half diamond and your half ball, just like you have with the uh, Southward set. So virtually this it's virtually the same in terms of uh, pick options. And I can confirm I've opened a wide assortment of locks with these. Um, I can open the same locks with this as I can with that, vice versa, but it is a lot easier working with the Southward uh, set for a couple of reasons. Um, one, uh, one of my biggest complaints about this, even more so than the... Um, the fact that the metal is not quite as nice is that it doesn't lock down as well. Like when you, you want to select a specific pick, you have to fold these down and screw the, the lock nut. And it doesn't really hold it well. Uh, so to help improve that, what I did is I filed down this nut. I use a nail file, I file this down making it nice and flat. So between this nice smooth flat surface on the nut, which wasn't perfectly smooth before, and ensuring that before you tighten it down that you have all of these picks flush together and flush all the way down before tightening it down. It is a lot more effective in keeping this uh, more solid but even when you do have it a uh, fairly decent it will eventually come loose it's still not going to last as long depending on how aggressive you need to be with your picking see it's already starting to wiggle so you know what you could also do is use a plier to manually tighten it like i have a mini set of prop pliers on a small leatherman that i have on my squirt and on my ps2 and I use that if I want to tighten this down better. So, um, and just the, the metal in general, I think it's more of a pot metal or, or weaker steel. So even when I get the wrench done on it and it's really tight, if you get really aggressive, depending on the picks, it can start getting a little bit loose, working its way loose. Whereas this thing stays really tight like a champ. It's very good. Uh, I've gotten into uh, Master Locks, Quick Sets, uh, Schlage, um, you know, various different locks I've tested it on. Uh, uh, Yale as well, using all the picks of the locker. Um, and what you want to do when picking to help minimize wiggle is when you put your pick in, have your finger out and go like like that action so it helps prevent uh, this from moving around too much you get slightly better feedback you know again although the mo the more secure you have the picks the better it will work um, it's also more difficult to just drop a pick down and have it flush because sometimes they're they're a little bendy and they don't want to sit as flush altogether the actual thickness of the picks to the southward um, well it's hard to see on camera it's it's not too far off in terms of the actual thickness it looks maybe a tiny bit thinner 
maybe the tiniest bit thinner. I don't have my calipers handy, so I can't show an exact measurement. It's similar thickness though, but it's just not as good of a metal. So when, when you're taking a pick out, you're putting them down, sometimes they'll get caught up and they won't all be go flat. And uh, again, putting them all flat down as best as you can is essential to having this stay as firm as you can get it. And uh, as you see with these picks, it's nice and firm. I can, uh, like, let me get this uh, my city rake in position here. Just a little bit more. These drop down flat with no problem. I don't have to be bothered with poor tolerances like on these cheaper units. Have it straight out. Make it uh, as snug as I can. And and it's nice and it's nice and secure. It's a lot more solid. Night and day difference from this, especially this prior to filing down that knot. It was really, really bad before doing that. So, um, and these, uh, the South Awards go for $40. Um, they're often running sales uh, for $35. You can also find this on drop.com. They, they, when it becomes available, it's also similar to the sale price on South Awards website. And, uh, and of course, if you get it now, you wouldn't be getting this. You'd, you'll be getting the uh, upgraded one, which I understand is a little bit lighter, which would be my preference. So I do pref like the lightness, a little bit easier to handle. And, uh, and, it's, and it's black, so if you don't mind it black versus having that chrome availability. If you want that chrome, then you'll want to find these, this model, which you could probably still find on drop. So... Um, yeah, so at the end of the day, if I had to compare these three, while this is lighter and a lot more durable than, like, this thing, I would still use one of these generics versus this original model just due to the pick assortment because you'll be able to open a lot more no a locks with a pick assortment in this pick set versus this one. I mean, it's really limited just with the pick profiles on here. So hands down, even though, you know, there are more difficulties, you're going to get into more locks of this than you will with this. But of course, comparing these two, uh, I just, unless you're on a super tight budget, you can't afford the 35 bucks for the sale price version of this, you know, then go ahead, get one of these generics. It'll work for you. It'll be, especially for a new lock picker, It'll be much harder to learn on because it's just not as secure. It's going to be harder to get good feedback on. But um, but definitely all day long, I would go for this. Bite the bullet, spend a few extra bucks. You're going to have a much more durable pick. Better tolerances, easier to use, better feedback because of more, a more secure lockdown. Um, a better finish. The picks are smoother overall uh, than this set. So anyway, that's my review. I hope you enjoyed this video. I also have uh, more jackknife sets from other companies. If you're interested in seeing them, let me know in the comments. I have one by Mad Bobs, as well as a couple of others. So um, let me know if you want to see those. I'd like to add a little extra to this video. Uh, since during the beginning of the video, I've uh, done a lot of work on improving the shortcomings of this uh, cheap pick including uh, improving the fit and finish, tolerances, you know, the lockdown, improving all of that, making it a much more usable uh, pick. I will get into that in more detail in a follow-up video and showing using it. Uh, but I also want to mention that this uh, cheap pick, it doesn't have a steel body, which this is a magnet, the southward pick. The body is steel. But this guy, it is not, although the picks themselves are steel, but a lower grade steel than what you get on these south boards. They're not going to be as sturdy or hold up as well over time. 
But um, yeah, anyway, I clean this up a lot, fix the tolerances, improve the lockdown more. It's a lot better. I'll get into that further in another video. But um, yeah, all the work I did on this does bring this uh, cheaper pick up to another level, making it a much more viable option to use than it was, than it is out of the box, which is pretty bad. The picks are very loose. They catch each other when trying to open and close the unit and it just doesn't stay locked down. Again, that's out of the box, and I've addressed all those major issues. It does work a lot better. So I'll get into what I did and show you the functionality of it in a separate video. And uh, it also, I also thought you might want to see uh, this pick in action, just picking a couple of locks with it, picking a lock with it. I'm going to pick the same lock, this Master 150, which has a, bu uh, a bunch of security pins, mainly spools. And I will rock it, rake it, and single pin pick it. So that way you can see uh, the different methods of getting into it with this pick. <coughs> and depending on how lucky I am, <coughs> excuse me, and depending on how lucky I am, I'll be able to get into it within seconds during the rocking and raking techniques. Every now and then I'll get into it like wiggle, 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 boom, it's in. And then other times it'll take like a minute or so. It, it really kind of depends on... So we'll see how it goes on this run. And of course single pin picking will always take the longest. So right now uh, for the rocking technique and also the way you hold your tension wrench is distinctly different in each method. So I'll show you the tensioning technique, you know, as well as, you know, how to use it. So here we go, this Master 150, starting off with the city rake, and it's securely locked down. When you're uh, with a rocking technique, you're going to pulsate it a bit. You're going to want to hold it in most of, most of the weight and then go like that as you're rocking. That's the best technique that I've found for doing the rocking technique, which is a lot different than the way you'll use the tensioner for a zip attack using a, uh, the S-rake or single pin picking. So let's get into this. And we're in. So that's your rocking technique. Now let's do raking with the S rake. Again, when you use this, you want to make sure all the picks are lying completely flat. So that way it gets the best lockdown. If you don't have them all flat, it will not stay secure as well. All right, now I'm gonna show you a raking technique or more specifically a zipping technique where using centrifugal force, you have put your, your pick in, tilt it up very slightly, whip it out, centrifugal force, hopefully knocks the pins into their sure line, allowing you to open it. It's all about timing, technique, feel, and moving your tension to just the right point. So, for my tensioning technique, I'm just going to touch it. I'm not really going to move it at all beyond touching my finger here. I'm going to enter the pick to the back, but not all the way in the back. Otherwise, you're going to be beyond the last pin and your technique won't work. You have to make sure that you're touching the last pin. And when you're, so when you're in, you're going to tilt it up a little bit and you're going to zip it out as quick as you can at a very slight angle. As you pull it out or as it's then you then you start turning your tensioner but you don't turn the tensioner before you zip it. As soon as it's pulling out then you hit your tensioner. Um, 
every now and then I'll get lucky and it'll open up within the first couple of zips, but sometimes it'll take a little longer. We'll see how lucky I get this time around. So again, um, putting my picket back here. And uh, pull it out. I almost had it there. Oops. I had it and it slipped off my finger. Uh, I, I did have it there. Let's do it again. Try not to make my finger slip this time. There we go. So that's your zipping technique using the S-Rake. Now let's single pin pick it. Again, the uh, technique is going to change again as far as tensioning. The tensioning is going to be completely different. Again, laying all these uh, nice and flat. Get this nut down good. And when I single pin pick this, um, I, I, I want to push the tensioner down. There's a lot of spring tension in this core, so you have to overcome that spring tension, but you only put enough tension to overcome pressure. You only put enough pressure to overcome the, come the tension in the core, but not push it hard beyond that. If you over tension, then you will not be able to pick a lock. So, and this has a lot of spools, so you're gonna see something called counter rotation where it looks like it sets, where this moves forward, but you still don't have the pin set because it looks like a dumbbell. So it, you've, you've moved it, and then it went up to the middle point of the dumbbell, then you gotta, hit it again, and as it's hitting the bottom side of that dumbbell, you're gonna see your tensioner pulled back, and then you push it back in for the open. So you wanna regulate your tension, being sure to ease up when you feel things like that. So, and, and the sucker has at least, at least a couple spools in it. It's a five pin lock. So let, here we go. Let's give this a shot. Um, and I selected the wrong pick. You don't want to use a deep hook. In fact, most locks you don't want to use a deep hook on unless you're doing up on uh, top of the keyword tension. This one requires a more of the um, uh, shallow, a short pick, the shallow one over here. You will never get this pick open using using this uh, that that deep pick. So. which was a problem with this lock because uh, this older pick only has that uh, deep hook and you'll, you'll never get into this to save your life uh, SPPing. The only way you'll get in with that pick is uh, raking. And, and the rake on that one has the same profile as this one. So let's get on to SPPing. Putting just enough ten uh, tension to overcome the spring tension on here. And I'm um, starting from the front to the back. So that's one, two, and about to pin three, I think. I'm sorry if you can't see what I'm doing too well here. There we go. I, I'm mostly there. Sometimes I'll get this pretty quickly. Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer. It varies. So 
So you're looking for pins that feel like they're bonding, that are harder to move. The ones that already feel springy, um, you are either set or they're just not ready to be set yet. And there we go. That's single pin picking. And, um, and that's about it for the demonstration. Uh, let me, for the heck of it, let me do the SP ping one more time. See if I'll do it a little bit quicker this time. Try to get a good angle at the camera for you to see what I'm doing. And you see how the tensioner moves. Again, I'm just putting enough pressure so that way it overcomes the spring tension of the core. Feeling for a binder. Binding pin, lifting it up. Also, every now and then I'll pull back my tension a tiny bit just in case I I overset anything. Oversetting a pin means you pushed it past, past the shear line. And there we go. Anyway, that's about it. Again, in summary, this is a really nice pick. Um, I really do like it. It, due to its thicker profile, though, the the thickness of the picks, and of course that you have only one tensioner and it's fairly wide, you're not you're going to have trouble getting into smaller keyways with this. So you'll want um, there are other options that you can use for tighter uh, keyways, and. I, uh, which I can show you in other videos, but um, yeah. Although one thing you might want to do if you have one of these, uh, which I'm going to do myself, is I'm going to narrow the very end of the tensioner. I'm, I'm going to make it come in like a ramp a bit. So that way, if I'm in a tighter keyway, and if having it in the normal position takes up too much of the keyway, if, if the tip is narrower, I can sometimes position the tensioner more on the, more around there instead. And then I would push it down like almost... <clears throat> so it gives me more room within the keyhole. And, and when that's not an option, sometimes you can just not insert the tensioner all the way. You have it out a little bit further, so that way you have more room once you actually get your pick in the lock. You have more room behind it because you don't have the tensioner in all the way. So that, that'll be it for now for my uh, review of the Southward uh, a lock pick, a jackknife lock pick, as well as it, the comparison to the uh, cheaper um, Asian knockoffs. So please hit that like button, please subscribe if you want to see more from me, especially uh, the follow up video getting more into depth um, about this guy showing you what I did to uh, help improve it and bring it to another level to the point where it's actually very usable, you know, versus the way it comes out of the box. All right, thank you for watching.